Hey, C. Sretzky here. As always, Canadian real estate market update with particular focus on Vancouver. If you get any sort of value or entertainment out of these videos, all I ask you to thumbs up and subscribe. Questions, comments, put those below. Uh, I want to touch this week on bank earnings. I want to touch on trigger rates, mortgage rates. I basically am trying to prep you for the Bank of Canada's rate hike here coming up on September the 7th. Everything you need to know, whether you're buying or selling, uh, these are pivotal, pivotal times. Uh, I can tell you personally that I'm trying to structure uh, real estate deals right now um, to have subject removal periods prior to September 7th because I think we're going to see a whole lot of deals collapsing. I think we're going to see buyers getting cold feet. Uh, so there's a lot of moving things that are happening right now. But I also want to ask, answer your questions because I get a lot of the same questions of what should I do with my mortgage? I'm on a variable. Should I move to a fix? I'm about to get a new mortgage. Should I go fix? Should I go variable? Should I go one year, two year term, five year term? Um, what the hell should I do? And so I'm going to try to answer that. Uh, but let's answer it first and foremost with Canadian bank earnings. They were out this week, um, mostly missing um, uh, profit estimates. Of course, they're increasing their loan loss provisions. Uh, if you look at the loan loss provisions, it looks to me like they're basically estimating or they're, they're, they're setting aside enough money for a soft landing. So that's what the banks are provisioning for. Again, that doesn't mean that that's going to happen, but it's something worth watching. I think those loan loss provisions will likely increase. Um, but the big thing here is, again, to watch the Bank of Canada. On September the 7th, it appears the market is pricing in 75 basis points. So I think that, yeah, we looks like we could very well get 75 basis points. 50 basis points, in my opinion, would be the absolute minimum. Uh, but 50 to 75 basis points in uh, September, which would then move your overnight rate to about 3%. So 275 basis point move on the year if in fact we get that 75 basis point rate hike. But also interesting to note from RBC this week was that they were saying we are going to have 80, approximately 80,000 of our customers will in fact hit their, we expect them to hit their trigger rates and we should, they should see an average increase to their monthly mortgage of about $200. Uh, so again, maybe not a huge sum of money, but I think there's certainly a cohort of households out there that are already stretched, that are feeling the pressure of, uh, the rising cost of food, the rising cost of fuel, and now an extra $200 a month going to their mortgage. And so what's going to happen here is that's just going to impact uh, additional consumer spending, you know, additional discretionary spending. You're not going to go out and buy that new TV. You know, maybe you, you wait until you get a new pair of shoes, stuff like that. And again, that is all um, ultimately part of the plan for the bank is when you raise interest payments, more goes towards debt servicing less demand in the overall, econ uh, overall economy, and that hopefully brings down uh, inflation over time. But this is going to have real ramifications for mortgage holders. So let's unpack this a little bit further because we have some great data from my good friend here, Ben Rabideau. But first, let's explain. Um, of all the mortgages that are out there, you know, you've got your fixed rate mortgage, and then you've got variable products. And so in Canada, we have two variable products. You've got, again, you've got a fixed payment variable rate mortgage, which means it doesn't matter how much rates go up, your payment stays the same, you just pay off less principal. That accounts for roughly 67% of all variable products outstanding. And most of the big Canadian banks offer this product. Uh, Scotia does not. Scotia has what's called a traditional floating variable product. And so do all the monoline lenders. It's a, it's a variable rate product, which means every time the Bank of Canada raises rates, that your monthly mortgage payment will increase alongside of those. And so if you've been holding one of those mortgages already this year, you already are feeling the pain of these rate increases. And so by seeing the Bank of Canada having now raised rates by 200 basis points, um, that increases, or 225 basis points, you've seen... Um, a substantial increase in your monthly cost of carrying your mortgage. And so for example, if you had a million dollar mortgage, which I don't think is uncommon for a family in Vancouver or Toronto, where the cost of a, a typical detached home is, you know, north of a million and a half dollars. And so if you had a million dollar mortgage on a 30 year amortization, you're looking at a monthly increase between 1100 to $1,200 per month, just on a floating rate variable. So that's been extremely painful. Now your fixed payment, Product has not yet been impacted, but I think that is coming as per my, some good data here from my good friend Ben Rabideau, as he notes that 
during the peak of the boom here between March of 2021 and February of 2022, uh, Canadian banks created $261 billion of new mortgages, of which account- accounts to about 15% of all mortgage debt outstanding. Uh, and those mortgages were issued at an average rate of 1.58%. And so most of these fixed rate variable, pro- variable products typically have a trigger rate that's on average about 300 to 350 basis points higher than the original rate uh, that you were given. And so if we extrapolate that 1.58 and you tack on three, a 300 basis point move, we should be getting triggered. We should, we should see a bulk of those getting triggered if the Bank of Canada raises between 50 to 75 basis points in September. So uh, I think that's just a continued shock to the system. Um, so again, if you're on that product, just be bracing for it. The, the big question here, I would say is, okay, you know, a couple, you know, 100 bucks here, 200 bucks here, 300 bucks to increase on your monthly mortgage. Probably not the end of the world. Most people are getting pay raises today. However, I, what the Canadian banks are trying to encourage you to do is to actually convert over to a fixed rate mortgage. They want you to convert from your variable and they want you to lock in, you know, a three or four or five year mortgage. And that's very, very good for the banks because guess what? They've got you locked in now for five years as their customer paying that debt. And if you want to break it, you know, it's not three months of interest like it is on your variable. It's, it's a substantial breakage penalty. So the banks are going to encourage clients to lock into fixed rates um, in order to sort of get around their trigger rates. And so the question is, How many borrowers will self-impose, how many borrowers will self-impose these rate hikes on themselves by actually converting to a fixed rate mortgage? Um, I think there's going to be a substantial portion of the cohort that does that. And again, so if you go from, you know, your variable rate of 1.58, which you had, you know, eight months ago, and you convert all of a sudden to a five-year fixed mortgage at 5.3%, that is going to be a substantial jump in your monthly mortgage payment. So that's the big question. Uh, My personal recommendation is if you're already on a variable, you just got to ride it out. Um, You know, if you you got the ability, you, you can always just increase your variable payments you can increase them as, you know, uh, most banks will allow you to do at least up to 10%. But I think with these variable products, you can probably make an exception. You can double up payments, et cetera, et cetera, to actually get principal paid down. And so, again, you have to keep in mind a lot of these variable products that were created, um, you know, six to 12 months ago have substantial discounts. On them. Some of them are prime minus one, which is huge because we're not even seeing anything like that. Today, you're lucky to get prime minus half a point in a best case scenario. In fact, you're probably closer to prime minus 0.25. So the discounts off prime, you know, six to 12 months ago were substantial enough that I wouldn't be handing that over and locking in a fixed rate at the highest rates in over a decade in the Canadian housing market. So um, that's kind of what we're watching. That's hopefully gives you some context of how I'm looking at things. The other thing to kind of keep in mind, we talked about this before, but B lending rates. So that's again, if you don't qualify at home capital or at RBC or or TD, you know you go down the line, you go to the, one of these B lenders, and so the B lenders are actually seeing. Uh, you have to keep in mind that most of these B lenders are on one year terms, and so we've seen these B lenders jump from uh, roughly three and a half percent last year to just north of six and a half percent today. So. Imagine if you got a loan that, uh, you know, you did a short-term loan at Home Capital or Equitable Group and you locked in for a one-year fixed term at 3.5% last year. You're now renewing today at about 6.5%. So the change in B lending rates year over year has been substantial. That's going to be another sort of squeeze, again, on consumption, the overall economy. I think it's pretty obvious. We've talked about it in the show, but we are going into, if we're not already in that recession, uh, so it is just a matter of time until the central bank's pivot. However, I don't think that is coming anytime soon. As someone that has been very skeptical of central bank policy, I just don't see it coming anytime soon based on the rhetoric, which we'll get into from Jerome Powell. But if you just look at the markets here for the Bank of Canada, for example, we're right now sitting at an overnight rate of 2.5%. Let's say we get um, 
75 in September. That brings you to 325. The market is pricing the rates from the BOC to end the year at three and a half. In fact, they're projecting the terminal rate, which is the rate at which the Bank of Canada will hit the ceiling, is at three and a half. And they are, they are projecting the market is pricing in rate cuts um, in the middle of next year in 2023. So again, the markets can be wrong. And if we're looking at Jerome Powell's comments, doesn't appear to be any pivot coming anytime soon. This is Jay Powell, Daddy Powell, the U.S. Federal Reserve, his latest comments at Jackson Hole just this week. So let's insert that video right here. Restoring price stability will take some time and requires using our tools forcefully to bring demand and supply into better balance. Reducing inflation is likely to require a sustained period of below trend growth. Moreover, there will very likely be some softening of labor market conditions. While higher interest rates, slower growth, and softer labor market conditions will bring down inflation, they will also bring some pain to households and businesses. These are the unfortunate costs of reducing inflation. But a failure to restore price stability would mean far greater pain. The U.S. economy is clearly slowing from the historically high growth rates of, of 2021, which reflected the reopening of the economy following the pandemic recession. While the latest economic data have been mixed, in my view, our economy continues to show strong underlying momentum. The labor market is particularly strong, but it is clearly out of balance, with demand for workers substantially exceeding the supply of available workers. Inflation is running well above 2%, and high inflation has continued to spread through the economy. While the lower inflation readings for July are certainly welcome, a single month's improvement falls far short of what the committee will need to see before we are confident that inflation is moving down. So we are moving our policy stance purposefully to a level that will be sufficiently restrictive to return inflation to 2%. Restoring price stability will likely require maintaining a restrictive policy stance for some time. The historical record cautions strongly against prematurely loosening policy. Committee participants' most recent individual projections from the June SEP showed the median federal funds rate running slightly below 4% through the end of 2023. Participants will update their projections at the September meeting. The successful Volcker disinflation of the early 1980s followed multiple failed attempts to lower inflation over the previous 15 years. A lengthy period of very restrictive monetary policy was ultimately needed to stem high inflation and to start the process of getting inflation down to the low and stable levels that were the norm until the spring of last year. Our aim is to avoid that outcome by acting with resolve now. So, these lessons are guiding us as we use our tools to bring inflation down. We are taking forceful and rapid steps to moderate demand so that com it comes into better alignment with supply and to keep inflation expectations anchored. We will keep at it until we're confident the job is done. Thank you. So I think it's still too late. I think there's still more pain to come for variable rate holders, but I think at this point you've come thus far. I think it makes sense to likely just hold it out as opposed to self-imposing. I think the economy rolls over as these, as these rate hikes crush demand and as they crush the economy, I see the long end of the, of the yield curve coming down, your five-year fixed rate mortgage is coming off. It's not gonna happen overnight, but that is certainly my view, again, Always could be wrong. You know, you have to do, do your own diligence, assess your own risk tolerance. That's kind of how I'm looking at markets right now. So anyways, hope that helped. As always, we'll see you next week.